As the leaders in EV charging in Australia, we've seen public charging grow and evolve over the last decade. So we wanted to share some helpful tips and information to help you better understand how to charge an EV at public charging stations. If you're thinking about owning an EV and you don't have access to off-street parking, you'll need to familiarize yourself with public charging as that's where the majority of your charging will happen. Or if you plan on installing a home charger, you should still be aware of how public charging works as you'll want to use this service when doing longer trips or just getting those awesome reserved car parks for EV drivers. Before we go through the different types of public charger options, we should first explain the difference between AC public charging stations and DC public charging stations. The reason this is important to understand is that you'll hear AC and DC mentioned a lot. AC fast chargers are often called destination chargers and can be found at locations like supermarkets, shopping centers, sporting stadiums, car parks, and even private businesses. AC public chargers are at least three to four times faster than portable or contingency chargers. However, this depends on a few things. The power connection, the vehicle capability, and potentially the charging cable that you're using. For modern EVs, it's normally safe to assume that when you plug into an AC public charger, that you would get between 35 and 80 kilometers of range per hour of charge. So if you're planning on using a public charger, it's a good idea to have a public or universal charging cable with your EV just in case. DC rapid and ultra rapid chargers are mainly found in locations like bigger shopping centers, petrol stations, and highway facilities. These chargers can deliver anywhere from 25 kilowatts through to 350 kilowatts. To give you an idea of how fast these chargers are, a 50 kilowatt rapid charger is able to provide you with 60 kilometers of range per 15 minutes or around 240 kilometers range per hour. Ultra rapid chargers take this a step further and are normally over 150 kilowatts. For capable vehicles, these units can provide up to 350 kilowatts, resulting in as much as 400 kilometers in 15 minutes. Of course, this is subject to your EV's charging capability. There are different plugs used for AC and DC charging. For AC charging, all new vehicles in Australia now come with Type 2 or Menikis style plug. For DC charging, if you have a Japanese make or model, chances are that it will come with a Chidemo plug. For everyone else, including Tesla, they'll most likely come with a CCS2 plug or plug type adapter. When it comes to DC public charging, almost all chargers have Chidemo and CCS2 options, but it's a good idea to check ahead of time. With DC charging, there's no need to produce your own cable as these often heavy cables come attached to the charging unit. The best way to understand what type of charging equipment is available to you at different charging locations, or even just to plan your next EV adventure, you can use apps like ChargeFox, PlugShare, Google Maps, and even via your in-car navigation system. ChargeFox operate Australia's largest EV charging network, which allows Australian EV owners to travel long distances and even city to city across Australia. Tesla for many is the reason we're able to talk about EVs as commonplace. And with that, it's hard not to acknowledge Tesla's efforts in rolling out their own supercharger network. These chargers are another form of DC rapid charger. However, while the CCS2 plugs may look the same, they are only designed to work with Tesla makes and models. In recent times, Tesla is planning to open up their public charging network to other brands of EVs. So be sure to check out local bulletins as this develops. The next thing we should discuss is how to activate and use a public charger and the cost of doing so. A charger is in unsupervised or free to use mode where you simply plug in and start charging without any further interaction. A charger can also be in a free to use mode, but may require the use of an app via services like that of ChargeFox to activate charging sessions. This helps operators understand the level of EV demand. There's the pay to use via an app, again, like that of ChargeFox, where you can check the rates to charge and activate your charge session. Lastly, and more commonly, for fleet operators or for those in apartments with shared charges, there is RFID card access, which are set up to be billed back to an account. Many AC charging stations are free to use, and most DC charging stations typically attract a small cost, which comes with the convenience of being able to charge quickly. 
How much often depends on the rate of power and prices can range anywhere from 20 cents to 60 cents per kilowatt hour, as an example. As with all publicly accessible amenities, here are a few tips in EV charging etiquette that are good to be aware of. Only park while charging in designated EV charging bays. Once you've completed your charging session, vacate the parking space to allow others to also charge. If the charger is tethered and has a charging cable attached, make sure the cable is put back in the holster and the cord coiled out of the way so it's ready to use next time. Should you find a charger that isn't working properly, be sure to notify the operators of the charger. The best way to do that is via apps like ChargeFox and PlugShare. If you would like any further information about what we've covered here, please get in touch or visit us at jetcharge.com.au. We look forward to creating an electric future together.